Here are the top stories for today, April 30, 2020. Malacanang prioritizes the proposal to grant aid to Filipinos who want to return to their provinces after the COVID-19 pandemic. The palace calls on the 2019 bar exam passers to work for the government as new lawyers and give back to the community. The Department of Agrarian Reform warns its officials against the use of fake beneficiary IDs and quarantine passes. And the DOST launches the Galing program to help address food security issues amid the coronavirus pandemic. Good day, I'm Rom Dufo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Palik Provincia proposal of Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo is now under discussion. The proposal seeks to grant incentive and livelihood assistance to Filipinos who want to return to their respective provinces after the COVID-19 pandemic. Under the proposed Balik Provincia program, Metro Manila residents who want to be relocated to their respective provinces after the COVID-19 outbreak will be provided free transportation and livelihood assistance. The proposed relocation would begin once COVID-19 pandemic is over. Uh, Go earlier said the Balik Provincia program is a long-term plan that intends to help the public adapt to the new normal after the COVID-19 crisis. This would also address overpopulation, traffic congestion, and pollution in Metro Manila. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the government is looking for best ways, including long-term solutions, to address the challenges that Filipinos are facing amid the health crisis. He says the government is considering Balik Provincia as one of its top priorities. Meantime, the Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, has realigned 1.5 billion pesos from its budget this year to provide more funds for workers under its COVID-19 Adjustment Measures Program, or CAMP. DOLE is targeting to provide one-time cash assistance amounting to 5,000 pesos each to 3,000 more workers. DOLE says the realignment was implemented to be able to assist more formal sector workers displaced by the COVID-19 pandemic, which is over 2.3 million. It has already provided cash assistance worth 10,000 each to more than 70,000 overseas Filipino workers and is set to start next month. It's regular tulong panghanap buhay sa ating disadvantaged displaced workers or tupad in areas under general community quarantine. DOLE also assists 275,000 informal sector workers hard hit by the pandemic through its Tupad Barangay Ko Bahay Ko program using its 1 billion peso emergency fund. Classes for grade school students will not begin in June due to the prevailing coronavirus disease health crisis in the country. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque made this clarification amid the intention of some private schools to start classes in June by implementing a multi-modal approach or a combination of both face-to-face -face and online classes. Roque reiterates only higher education institutions may resume operations on a skeletal workforce in areas not under the enhanced community quarantine on May 4. He said that there will be no classes this June for grade school while higher education institutions or HEIs can have skeletal forces but only to finish the academic year and only to consider alternative learning. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases earlier recommended moving the next school opening to September while DepEd is eyeing late August. DepEd is set to present its recommendations to the IATF in May. In Iloilo, an educator in Gimbal Town continues to provide learning materials for kindergarten and grade school pupils. Rodrigo Basco Jr., a department head at the Gimbal National High School, is using his own resources to provide worksheet activities that can be distributed to pupils who can work on them while at home. About 300 pupils from the villages of Pescadores, Herona Jimeno, Torre Blanca Blumentit, have initially benefited from Basco's Learning on Distance Initiative, or LODI. The worksheets contain activities that would sharpen learners' skills in numeracy, vocabulary, and reading comprehension, among others. Basco and village frontliners went house-to-house -to, -house to, to distribute the worksheets. 
Soon after, Bungol, San Vicente and other villages joined about and about 20 villages and groups in Gimbal and its neighboring towns have expressed interest in replicating Lodi. Basco says the pupil could answer one or two pages of the worksheet daily to avoid getting bored. Once the pupils were done with the worksheets, the village officials again conducted a house-to-house -house collection of papers for checking. The corrected worksheets were returned to the pupils along with a new set of a worksheet. The Lodi program has been recognized by Iloilo Vice Governor Christine Garin and Gimbal Vice Mayor Jennifer Garin. Basco said the local government unit is considering providing Lodi volunteers with IDs they could use in maintaining the literacy program. Several lawmakers of the House of Representatives on Wednesday appealed to the national government to reconsider barring senior citizens from leaving their homes under the enhanced community quarantine regulations. Meanwhile, the Department of Social Welfare and Development starts payout for social pension beneficiaries. More on these and other news around the metro from William Theo. House Senior Citizens Committee Chair and Senior Citizens Party List Representative Francisco Dattel Jr. said he sees no need to completely disallow senior citizens from going out of their homes just because of their age. Dattel said not everyone would have poor health or ailments and senior citizens also need to go outside to move around. House Labor and Employment Committee Chair and one Pac-Man party list representative Enrico Pineda noted that many of the top executives of industry and officials of the national government, its agencies, and local government units are senior citizens, even President Duterte. Cagayan de Oro City Representative Rufus Rodriguez said, he received several complaints from senior citizens saying if such rule is applied to them, it should also apply to other citizens. Kabayan Representative Ron Salo said the IATF should reconsider this restriction to ensure that the rights of senior citizens are not unduly curtailed but still ensuring the protection of their health and safety. In other news, the DSWD on Wednesday said it has started the first semester payout of its social pension program to augment the needs of indigent senior citizens during the enhanced community quarantine. In a press release, DSWD said as of April 29, a total of 227,876 indigent senior citizens have already received their pension for the first semester, amounting to 3,000 pesos each at 500 pesos per month from January to June. Other DSWD field offices are now finalizing the fund transfer process for the immediate release of the stipend of the remaining beneficiaries. Meanwhile, Malacanang on Wednesday urged the bar exam passers to give back to the community as they start their career as new lawyers. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque congratulated the passers of the 2019 bar exams in what he described as a life-changing moment. Roque, who is a former law professor, reminded the new lawyers that they studied law because of their ideals and expressed hope that the new lawyers would consider a career in government as it would be a chance to help the community. He also reminded the new lawyers to always uphold the law at all times and use it to protect people's rights. And an update from Yorme, Manila Mayor Isco Moreno Domagoso. Tondo 1st District will be placed under a hard lockdown over the weekend for the conduct of mass testing as cases of COVID-19 continue to rise in the area. Wet and dry markets and grocery stores inside Tondo 1 area will be closed during the hard lockdown. Domagoso said the city government is targeting the Rosario Almario Elementary School, Tipaes High School, Tondo High School, and Isabelo de los Reyes Elementary School as venues for mass testing. For the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. So to come. The Department of Agrarian Reform, or DAR, warns its officials against the use of fake beneficiary IDs and quarantine passes. The DSWD warns 4 P's beneficiaries against misusing the government's cash aid. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues.
ka. Galing ko lang ng grocery. Siyempre, hindi ko hahayaan na pumasok ang COVID-19 sa bahay at mapahamak ang pamilya ko. Kaya iiwan kong sapatos ko sa labas. At ngayon, maghuhugas ako ng kamay ng 20 seconds. O yan, wala na ang virus. Tandaan, buhay ng pamilya natin na nakasalalay. Let's hear it for the first one. Alam niyo ba na pumapasok ang COVID-19 sa ating katawan sa pamamagitan ng mata, ilong at bibig? Kaya lagi kaming conscious dito sa bahay kapag umuubo kami. Lagi kami naghuhugas ng kamay in 20 seconds. Pag lumalabas kami, lagi namin suot ang mask. Lagi lang natin tatandaan ng mga machine. Buhay ng pamilya natin ang nakasalalay dito. Let's go! Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. Ugaliin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. The Department of Agrarian Reform, or DAR, reminds its field officials to guard themselves against the fabrication and distribution of fake agrarian reform beneficiary IDs and quarantine accreditation passes. ARB IDs were issued by DAR for the purpose of facilitating the access of the ARBs of the various government aid, especially during the enhanced community quarantine. DAR quarantine accreditation passes, on the other hand, are issued to enable ARBs to continue supplying agricultural products to critical areas affected by the ECQ. Pangulayan said all DAR officials and personnel must guarantee that the ARB IDs and the Q apps are only used by authentic organizations, agrarian reform communities, and the agrarian reform cooperatives. ARB IDs are issued only to qualified ARBs to ensure that they will be receiving the benefits under the social amelioration programs of the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, the Department of Labor and Employment, and the concerned LGUs. In business, government workers can now avail of emergency loans from the Government Service Insurance System, or GSIS, up to 40,000 pesos. GSIS President Rolando Makasaet said the agency's Board of Trustees have decided to increase the loanable amount after noting that some of those who applied for emergency loans have existing loans. GSIS members may apply for emergency loans after Malacanang declared a state of calamity nationwide since March 16 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Makasait said they are accepting online loan applications because of the enhanced community quarantine declared over Luzon, among other areas. He said GSIS members who are medical frontliners will get additional life insurance if they die of the virus. He said they have received reports that eight GSIS members who are medical frontliners have died because of COVID-19. The Department of Social Welfare and Development warns beneficiaries in Region 10 not to misuse their cash aid and spend them on vices. More on this and other news from the provinces from Laid Gabagani. The Department of Social Welfare and Development in Region 10 has appealed to the beneficiaries of the government's various cash aid programs to spend the money only for essential needs. This amid reports that beneficiaries of Pantawid Pamilyang Filipino Program and Listahanan were caught buying liquors or illegal drugs. Various police units in the region have recorded airing for peace and Listahanan SAP beneficiaries for violating quarantine protocols and certain laws. 
In Ilocos Norte, the city government of Batac announced plans to put up more hand washing stations in public areas to prevent the spread of emerging infectious diseases like COVID-19. Mayor Albert Chua said this following installation of such facilities at the Batac Public Market. Similar stations were earlier established at the City Health Office, City Hall Office, and at the Riverside Empanadaan. Chua said the installation of additional hand washing facilities will become a continuing program even after the current health crisis. Meanwhile, residents in the town of Tarangnan Samar will only be allowed to go out of their house three times a week as part of stricter lockdown rules. The local government issued on Tuesday Executive Order No. 8, placing the town's 41 villages under total lockdown. All movements in the village must be monitored by village officials at the checkpoint. The village task force will lead the distribution of food packs in their respective areas. On Monday, the DOH confirmed that there are six new COVID-19 patients from Tarangnan. Most of them are health workers and some are neighbors of town's first three infected persons. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Lid Kabagani. Up next, Malacanang respects Taiwan's decision not to deport an OFW who had posted malicious things online against President Duterte. And the DOST launches the Galing program to help address food security issues amid the coronavirus pandemic. The PNA News returns after these reminders. Mga mommies, pagdating sa COVID-19, dapat hindi tayo kampante. Bagamat hindi nakikita ang sakit na ito, ito ay nakamamatay. At hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin lunas. Kaya protektahan natin ang ating pamilya. Laging maghugas ng kamay, wagahawakan ng mukha, at manatili sa bahay para makaiwa sa sakit na ito. Tandaan, buhay ng pamilya natin ang nakasalalay dito. Let's hear the last one. Hi, Gaps! Kamusta? Well, ito dahil sa COVID-19, medyo stress. Oo, oh, okay lang yan, Gaps. Napagdaanan ko din yan. Ano kayo pwede natin gawin, no? Kung nararamdaman mo na gulong-gulong ka na sa mga naririnig mo, sa mga nababasa mo, mag-post ka muna, saka ka huminga ng malalim. Buti na lang tumawag ka. Iba talaga pag may nangangamusta. A strong body starts with a strong mind. Tama. Let's heal as one. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Malacanang says it respects the decision of Taiwan rejecting the deportation of a Filipino caregiver who allegedly criticized the government's COVID-19 response on social media. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the deportation is a decision to be made solely by Taiwanese authorities. In a press briefing, Taiwanese authorities said they will not deport the Filipino caregiver because she did not violate their laws and regulations. Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Oh jiang An emphasized that workers in Taiwan are protected by their laws and regulations. Manila Economic and Cultural Office Chair Angelito Banayo said there were no instructions to arrange the deportation of the Filipina caregiver. Earlier, the Department of Labor and Employment accused a certain Elenel Egot Ordidor of cyber libel for posting alleged nasty and malevolent materials against President Duterte on Facebook. Labor attaché Fidel Makawiak said Ordidor's posts fall under cyber libel under the Cyber Crime Prevention Act or Republic Act 10175. The Philippine Air Force has announced it is building seven emergency quarantine facilities in Metro Manila and several areas in Luzon. 
PAF spokesperson Aristides Galan said its 355th Aviation Engineering Wing was aided in this initiative by the WTA Architecture and Design Studio and other stakeholders. He adds that the PAF and its partners started the construction of these EQFs last March 30. These EQFs were made of good lumber, polypropylene sheet and roof insulator. Galang said these EQF are designed to help decongest hospitals and accommodate suspected and probable cases of COVID-19 mass testing. Beneficiary hospitals will serve as their caretakers of the said facility. Government troops clash with the Abu Sayyaf in Sulu. Meanwhile, soldiers recover an arms cache belonging to the New People's Army. More on this from Janice Kade. An Abu Sayyaf group bandit was killed while a soldier was wounded in a clash in Sulu. The firefight broke out around 7.36 a.m. Tuesday in Barangay Tumatangis, in Danan. The bandits fled to different directions after the nine-minute clash, leaving behind the remains of a slain comrade and an M16 Armalite rifle with attached M203 grenade launcher. West Mincon Commander Cirilito Sobihana assured they have sufficient forces to pursue the ASG bandits who are taking advantage of the situation. Meanwhile, government troops recovered a cache of firearms belonging to the Communist New People's Army in Zamboanga del Norte. The arms cache was discovered Tuesday in Barangay Bunawan, Godod Town, following a tip from a former NPA rebel. To date, the Army's 44th Infantry Battalion has recovered three M16 Armalite rifles, two AK-47 assault rifles, and a caliber 45 pistol. Major General Generoso Ponyo, the Army's 1st Infantry Division Commander, has called on the remaining NPA fighters in the mountains to come down and return to the fold of the law. In Negros Occidental, Two city mayors have condemned the atrocities perpetrated by the CPP NPA against government troops amid the COVID-19 crisis. Victoria City Mayor Francis Palanca said his city strongly condemns any attempt or action intended to destabilize peace and threaten innocent lives in their community. Rogelio Tongson Jr., mayor of Himamailan City, meanwhile lauded the great service of the three soldiers who died during a clash with communist terrorists in Sitio Tugas, Barangay Carabalan, on April 19. He also said the fallen soldiers were instrumental in the realization of the whole-of-nation approach to end the armed conflict and in de delivering projects for people in far-flung areas. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. To help address food security issues while the country is battling COVID-19, the Department of Science and Technology, or DOST, has launched the Galing P-Card Contra COVID-19 program. Galing, or Good Agri-Aqua -Agri Livelihood Initiatives Towards National Goals, is a program created in partnership with different government agencies and private sector groups. Reynaldo Ibora, Executive Director of the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development, said the program aims to lessen the problem on food security and livelihood, as well as aid in the food supply. The Galing program consists of information dissemination, distribution of food products to affected communities and to frontliners, and promotion of home and village-scale food production. The U.S. Secretary Fortunato de la Peña said many people will need a supply of nutritious food and employment, which will be handled through the program. Take another look at today's biggest stories. Malacanang prioritizes the proposal to grant aid to Filipinos who want to return to their provinces after the COVID-19 pandemic. The palace calls on the 2019 bar exam passers to work for the government as new lawyers and give back to the community. The Department of Agrarian Reform warns its officials against the use of fake beneficiary IDs and quarantine passes. And the DOST launches the Galing program to help address food security issues amid the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom.
To check more news content, check our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more news about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags on all our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's really those of the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I am Rom Dufo. Good day and keep safe.